Sada Tactical here with another video. And today I want to talk about the difference between an AR, an actual rifle size, and SVR, a short barrel rifle, and what's called an AR pistol. So I'm not going to go too in depth into what an actual AR is. I'm sure most of you are familiar. It's a magazine fed rifle. Uh, the civilian version will only shoot semi automatic, which means you pull the trigger, it fires one round at a time. Remember, AR does not stand for assault rifle, it stands for Armalite rifle. Armalite being the first company to manufacture the design uh, under Eugene Stoner's permission. Uh, to be a full length AR and to be legally uh, sold as a rifle, it has to have a 16 inch barrel. Now, ideally, the barrel is going to be either 14 and a half or 16 inches long. If it's 14 and a half, you would typically have a pin muzzle device to make it that legal length. It would have a collapsible stock for the most part, so you can go in and out, be adjustable, okay, selector switch, and so forth. So again, you're familiar with this design. The main drawback of an AR is its size. It's a long piece of equipment, right? So if I'm working specifically around a house or a close quarter, right, this is a lot of distance for me to cover, right? If I'm trying to work around a corner or around a tight doorway, a lot of people would shoulder it to make it shorter, right? Um, or just find other techniques around it, which may not make it as ideal. So at some point, someone decided, you know what, let's make it shorter. So this is an SVR, this is a 10 inch barrel. It does have a pin suppressor on it, so it seems about the same length, but this is the barrel actually ends over here, right? So it makes it a lot shorter. In order for you to have a short barrel rifle, which maintains all of the same qualities and features of a regular AR rifle, with the exception of being shorter, you will need to uh, submit the paperwork for the ATF, what's called the Form 4, um, to get uh, the stamp, essentially a permission, to own one of these rifles. So a lot of people were like, you know what? I see the value, it is shorter, it is smaller, probably easier to handle, but A, it costs $200 to get that stamp, and B, it takes time, right? You gotta wait about nine months to get that stamp. Is it really worth that hassle? So at some point, somebody realized, you know what? What makes it a rifle is the fact that I can shoulder it. What if I create something that is not designed to be shouldered, right? So this would have a brace, that essentially goes around the forearm or leans against the forearm, depending on the type of brace that it is. It is not designed to be shoulder, right? Hence making it a pistol. If it's a pistol, I don't need the short barrel rifle stamp. I can just go ahead, purchase one of these as a pistol and utilize it in a similar manner. This is a seven inch barrel. It's a really short barrel, right? So compared to a 16 inch barrel, you can see the difference, right? One above the other, one next to the other, right? A lot smaller, so if I work around the house, this is a lot tighter, a lot easier for me to move. Again, it is not designed to be shoulder, although obviously it could, but you never learned that from me. The nice thing about this compared to a regular pistol that it will still take a magazine that typically would have a higher capacity, would shoot rifle caliber rounds, so think about the 223556, 300 blackout. You can even get um, AR pistols in 308 and a bunch of variety of other calibers in between. I can mount all kinds of accessories on it from optics to lights, right? So I really can make this a very versatile tool for home defense. So the biggest advantage is it's short, it's tiny, it's easy to use, and it maintains all the capabilities of an actual rifle. What are some of the drawbacks? So first of all, it is a shorter barrel, which means it requires a shorter um, gas tube, which sometimes would create issues. Some of them do not operate as smooth as a full-size uh, rifle would. So that is one thing to keep in mind. The muzzle is very close to your face, right? Because everything is shorter. So understand that the muzzle device, the type of device you're gonna have would greatly affect how comfortable it is for you and specifically people next to you okay, when you shoot it. So something to keep in mind. Uh, otherwise, it's just a little thing. It's understanding that since this brace is not designed to be shoulder, if you do shoulder it, in theory, you are violating the law. Okay? And 
that is a federal law that you're breaking at that point. So you want to keep that in mind. But if you put those elements aside, the advantages certainly outweigh the disadvantages. I think everybody should own at least one of these. This is what I would call my truck, uh, my truck gun. It sits in my, uh, in, in my trunk, in my truck, and it, it doesn't take a lot of space, and it's always there. It's something for, easy for me to access and utilize in an emergency. For those of you that live in a home, uh, typically if it's a larger home or if you have a yard, and a pistol may not necessarily fit all your needs. You may have to maybe potentially defend your home a little bit further out than having a rifle that shoots um, a rifle round, sorry, a pistol that shoots a rifle round may be an advantage at that point. Uh, so something to consider. At Masada, we have these Anover Armory pistols. This is what we sell here. Um, they are 10 inch barrels, so they're a little bit longer than the seven inch, uh, but still pretty short. Uh, this one does have a handguard, uh, flip sides, and optic already mounted by six hour, makes it a really ideal on defense. Uh, firearms, notice that this brace, being a brace, not a, a stock, it is not adjustable. It may appear as one, but it actually does not move in and out. There is an, uh, an Allen uh, wrench here or an Allen screw, but you can uh, adjust it initially to your size to fit your form, but once it's uh, it's locked in, it's locked in. You can move it in the middle of operating this firearm and so forth. Notice the, the curvature on this brace. The idea is for it to lean against your forearm uh, for that added control and support. Again, it is not designed to be shouldered, right? So just keeping that legality um, squared away. Uh, these are now running on a special at our store. So if you have any questions, please call 410-415-6015. Or email us bk at masadatactical.com. I'll be more than happy to forward you some more information. Certainly something you want to get your hand on before uh, any more rules and regulations change, either uh, in your jurisdiction, us being in Maryland, or nationally. Uh, this is certainly one of those things that the ATF and the current administration are going after. So get them while you can. As always, if you have any questions, feel free to contact, reach out on social media, Instagram, Facebook, LinkedIn, YouTube, or send us a direct message uh, via email or call us. Stay safe, watch your six, we'll see you next time.